Hello, I'm here with Michael Brukeem. Michael, what actually don't what, what year are you? I was class of 2007. Class of 2007, right? Right, a little bit younger than me. That's upsetting for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you know, and uh, I appreciate you joining again. As you know, we're just doing some conversations with alums, you know, from different years, talking about kind of the issues that are facing Harvard that have been kind of been on display since 107. Uh, and honestly, what to do about them that's productive. So I appreciate you you being willing and riff with me for a while on this. Um, awesome. So Pleasure know, to your, be I'm here. Kind of curious, like, you know, I, I'm kind of, I think, as you know, and hopefully some other people know, running for the Harvard Board of Overseers, um, kind of on what honestly seems like a pretty standard platform. Like, let's make sure Harvard is an academic institution, that there's no student disruption, that rules are applied, like, consistently and fairly. Um, but I'm kind of curious, like, I mean, you've you've been active in a lot of different channels, like, Tell me a little bit of the story, like what you've seen and kind of where you think the university needs to change the most. Um, yeah, you know, so I, uh, I you know, I, I think my kind of unique lens into Harvard uh, is I, w I was, uh, when, when I was there, I was the editorial chair of the Harvard Crimson, the co chair. And it was uh, it's the kind of um, Larry Summers debacle. Uh, so I, I spent you know, probably an inordinate amount of time in the, you know, understanding kind of the university politics and 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 watching, uh, you know, Larry essentially, uh, you know, kind of kind of get, I don't know, let's say, get, 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 I guess, get canceled. Um, and uh, I spent a good amount of time with him, faculty members at the time, uh, and ended up planning an editorial, uh, or it was it was on you know on, on behalf of the staff editorial, it was kind of described as Harvard's loss, um, because I did think that was that was not a it wasn't a good departure and you know notwithstanding you know uh, whether one would specifically agree or disagree um with uh, you know some of the hypotheses he was putting forward about uh, women in science at the time um i, I did think that he was um he, he was doing good things and he, and he was pushing the university he was trying to push the university forward and and in some ways I, you know my my um my view of it is that there was a lot of underlying kind of resistance to to generally uh, just kind of you know it, it embrace the future from the yeah. university, uh, and then that that was really the undercurrent of what kind of did him in. And and then since then I've you know followed the university closely um, because it so happened that uh, I ended up uh, marrying someone who went to Harvard uh, years after me. Uh, she had a pretty different experience than I did. Mine was, you know, just awesome. I, I, I thought it was a great place, uh, rel relatively, you know, open-minded uh, place for, for a lot of different views. Um, and, you know, when, when I was dating her and she was, uh, you know, a number of years later, it seemed that whatever had happened to Larry Summers had kind of evolved into a place where people were more afraid to share different viewpoints uh, that was, uh, it was a pretty stifling environment, uh, not a not a ton of sense of uh, diversity of viewpoints. And, and you know, there was just a, a championing of kind of this almost kind of just superficial diversity, um, you know, rather than a, a, a true intellectual diversity. Um, and so that that's kind of been my, my prism into it. And I, and I think, uh, you know, if we don't step up and people don't step up and, and try to change course and, and you know, to you said to to your point, just on on the very basic level, just you know the, the civility required to educate, it's probably like foundational. Uh, and then yeah. on top of that, on, on top of that civility, I think then you build, um, you know, how do you truly actually create an environment where I you know ideas are championed, um, yeah. and uh, you know it's not about you know who you are, but what you're talking about. Um, yeah, and, uh, I think. You know, universities are some some somehow ground zero for civilization, right? It's like yeah. it, you know, if if you believe that there's a battlefield of ideas, where do those ideas actually get refined and debated and uh, wrestled with? It's it's you know, off, in our modern society, it's at universities. So uh, yeah. we need we need this to be a, uh, a you know, we need universities to play their function. Yeah, I agree. And I think what's been interesting, at least for me, my experience is I've watched this as well, along with you, and I think a lot of other alums with a lot of dismay um, over the years. And then you had 10-7 and the university's response to it. And I'll be honest, it kind of blew my mind, right? Because yeah. it was one of those things where, you know, you saw, you know, this set of um, 
restrictions on speech and, you know, everything from, you know, these questions about, you know, people being threatened with disciplinary action for fat phobia and, you know, like, you know, people being, you know, offers being rescinded for pe people posting memes, like a lot of like real closed and stereotype speech. But then when it came to the 107 response, we hear from the university, oh, it's free speech, right? They're, everything's yeah. free speech. Yeah. There are no limits. So like, to me, that was just the, that juxtaposition blew my mind. It's like, wait a minute. I actually agree with the speech, free speech thing, but how are we selectively choosing, you know, where we limit speech versus where apparently we believe in free speech? That seems right. completely. Yeah. I, I mean, it was almost like, you know, almost the, 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 it's almost as if the administration and leadership has been doing the exact inverse of what you would want them to, to what, what you would expect of a university, which is on kind of most matters, you would want them to be rather kind of neutral and allowing free speech. And, um, you know, we've been watching that on like genuinely relatively, you know, what, what I would think of as not the most consequential things about, you know, you, you, you know, the, 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 the university has been taking all sorts of very, very aggressive positions, right. Or fat yeah. phobia or whatever. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, having putting students through trainings and um you know creating this culture where it's actually very extremely you know kind of like a police state on frankly what can and can't be said um and then on the most consequential of things you'd actually you 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 know you could see a consistent neutral pattern playing out and then say you know this is this is so big and we're, we're just going to stay neutral again um but then um you know this but it wasn't that it was it was a total you know uh hostile environment they were last in the rankings on on you know an assessment of of free speech uh friendly environments uh and and then on this most consequential matter where you'd say okay now we need someone to kind of have a moral backbone and, and stand up and say you know where where you know you'd, you'd say like oh you know what like if if throughout uh most of the 20th century universities didn't take much of a stand, but they took a stand in, let's call it World War II or in civil rights. Um, you'd be like, okay, that, that's probably about right, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. And here we are. And, you know, it's like, this is, this is kind of that moment where it's like you, you need universities to be a little bit of a moral compass yeah. um, or, you know, at, or at minimum, like have, uh, you know, at least had a, a consistent pattern of, of advocating for yeah, speech. Like right? Like one or the other, but it's just the opposite. It's like, it's like where, where it matters, we're going to be the op, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to share yeah, our duty. Which and then, the question of how much they're using free speech as a defense rather than actually something they embrace and believe in, right? Which I think is like a really challenging and upsetting thing to be thinking might be happening, right? It's also a question of, you know, when you think about some of the philosophies that the faculty are putting forward or where the university has drifted, it's like, how much are we in this oppressor oppressed narrative as opposed to truth seeking? Uh, you know, the way I've been saying it is, you know, we figured out a while ago the old line that like might isn't right, but yeah. not might being not right, uh, right, is also it's the exact same line. It's just inverted. Right. And are we really back to that? Uh, to it's kind of a to wild thing to consider. Um, to totally. And, and then you try to figure out how we got here. Right. And, and universities have been, you know, because it's not just in universities. That's now. It's it's everywhere, right? You you were at a you know large corporation in the past, and and like like these things have a way of working their way into institutions and yeah, um, and and into everyday dialogue and and um, uh, but you know the in a lot of ways I do I do see you know, like if we don't fix it at universities, we don't have a lot of hope to fix it elsewhere because universities is kind of where it started. And, and when I started dating my wife, I was like, oh, it's not gonna hit the real world. Don't worry, the, the, the students will graduate. And, you know, the, the, the you know, the, but I was wrong. I mean, it, it was, it came I, I in the last five years as like a tidal wave um, where, you know, frankly, I think corporate America has been on its back foot um, and been very reactive um, and, you know, we're seeing all sorts of institutions across America kind of, uh, you know, succumb to this idea of, uh, you know, the, the, this kind of hierarchy of uh, the oppressed and and, um, and that we need to discriminate in order to make up for past discrimination, which is yeah. just a ludicrous, ludicrous idea. 
Yeah. Um, and so, so we've got to correct it. And, you know, on the university yeah. front, the other thing that I became aware of just over the last year and, and now it's, it's kind of everyone's talking about it is, you know, I, I think there's this almost na maybe naivete amongst most, um, most alums who just like, you know, they want to give to their university. They want to be supportive. They want to like, uh, uh, you know, maybe to the extent that they, uh, you know, curry favor with, uh, you know, the, the possibility of their kids getting in or whatever. They want to be in good standing, um, you know, maybe get a, a building named after them if they're if they're that scale of donor or whatever. But meanwhile, there's insane amounts of money going towards universities coming from, you know, state actors uh, who have a totally different agenda. It's not it's not about any of that. It's about, uh, you know, uh, advancing an ideological agenda. Um, we, you know, we have all sorts of new departments that didn't exist, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, and, uh, th they've been carefully, uh, you know, kind of assembled, right. They're, 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 I, I think we should look at them with a deep skepticism and, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make any intuitive sense that Qatar would be the number one funder, foreign funder of American university educations. That's, there's nothing inherently yeah. logical about that to me and and so then what is that money going to what kind of influence yeah. is it buying i think those questions need to be asked yeah and i think the thing for me again i think you know the, the reason harvard matters is it is kind of the most notable american educational brand globally um oh. you know it is set as the elite the elite and it it sets the tone i think for a lot of hires i think part of the reason there's such such politics at harvard around these issues is because everyone recognizes the fact that while it's an academic institution it's quite a political prize in various directions yeah. right and i think the I reality is that just setting the tone with Harvard saying like, look, no, this is, we need to, this is an academic institution. Its mission is to educate students, right? Um, it needs to set, have consistent speech policies that are consistently enforced, right? Whatever those end up being, and there's a wide variety we can debate about what those should be. There needs to be a culture that people feel safe advocating all sorts of viewpoints. You know, these things seem like they should be table stakes for, you know, America and for us to set the tone. You need a strong administration that is actually holding the line on these things. And that's why, again, I just kind of go back to first principles. It's like there are some big problems facing our society. 10-7, I mean, if there's going to be a blessing to it, um, the blessing is that it laid a lot of this bare and makes it a thing that is now no longer a partial problem that maybe we have to deal with, but we'll keep donating to the university. But it becomes a thing that's, you know, urgently needs to be addressed, uh, which, again, is why I'm running for overseer. But, but yeah. I love it, Sam. I'm, I'm very uh, I'm excited for your candidacy. I, I, I hope you win. You know, you it's. It's awesome that you're stepping forward. There are other people trying to start new institutions, but we can't just lose these institutions. They're incredibly important, you know. The, the, and and exactly what you said, Harvard is the the top of the pyramid. Everyone looks to Harvard as its kind of guide guide guiding light, right? Like the the world kind of follows and pays attention. I remember when I was there, I thought the whole world was paying attention to the Larry so Summers kind of saga, and now whatever's happening now has to be, you know, in, the, in this world, you know, hundred x that. Um, yeah. And, and people are taking their cues and what happens there will have reverberations across uh, all sorts of other institutions. So it's it's worth fighting for. Well, I appreciate your time to speak today and your support as I figure this out. And uh, I hope you have a really great end of the year. Best Thanks, of Mr. luck, Bruce. Sam. Awesome. Cheers. Talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Um,